must get a lot of people coming to ask you your advice now. I mean, you do your shows and then you, you even hold a weekly forum in the theatres afterwards where people can, can come and ask. No, no, you're, um, after, the sh after the show, because yeah. I do this kind of psychic striptease, so then they feel safe enough. And I say, you know, you can leave now for drinks and then come back and have a conversation because it worked really well in mental institutions. And this is with normal audiences, like who's normal. They all come back and then really, it's extraordinary how people suddenly say, you know, that, because we have no place to meet, people who have the one in four. Alcoholics have their you know, place, but we have no place. So they start to talk or ask questions. So I take a lot of it, but then I, once a week, I used to have um, Marjorie Wallace from Sane bring in a whole army of all her you know, people, and then I'd get lectures like Mark Williams or neuroscientists, and this was free for the public, and then they could find help or ask questions, you know, what's in medication? Nobody knows this stuff. And so I tried to turn it into a, um, a walk-in center, but it's a theater, so we were talking about before, too bad we haven't got real ones, you know, too bad you have to do it in the West End. Yeah, so you're trying to, you're trying to fill a gap that you see there, there in is mental health gap. services. Yeah, there is a huge gap. Because part of the most of the cure is when you see another person's eyes who has what you have. And then it's such a relief because you finally go, oh, good, I wasn't making, you know, because people try to convince you you're making it up. And when you see another of your people, then you can talk drugs and symptoms for days. <laughs> and, and they're never bored. Real, other people go, shut up already, but you're never bored. Um, what was your experience like of being in institutions? I'm the wrong person to ask because I loved being in institutions. <laughs> I mean, luckily I could afford it the first, you know, I mean, people are screwed in this country because they're closing these places. So I, I had some insurance money, so I, I make a joke that I could stay for one hour. Um, but my insurance is out too. I'm not saying feel sorry for me, but we're all run dry and God knows where everybody's going to go now. And I always say, well, even if you don't care about mental illness, the next time you're mugged or your house is broken into, it wasn't somebody who was well-adjusted. So, um, you know, everything leads to the brain. <laughs>